Seen and let's give our God some praise in this place. I want to welcome us to this place called Gethsemane. This is our annual Let's have some church in this house. Let's give our God some praise because every praise belongs to Him. We want to welcome our Facebook page. We want to welcome our YouTube. And we have to all the way in this place put something in that we can get something out.
Hallelujah is the highest praise. Amen. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the Gethsemane Church, it is time for us to continue uh, getting a high spirit of praise. It is time for us to participate in our giving. If you are a member here at the church, uh, we know that it is next season, and we know that there are some things that we have that are already out there as far as contributions and our pledges. But if you can, and with the will, just pick up a cleaner from one of our officers up front, and we'll be so glad as to service you. If you are on um, our YouTube or our Facebook, uh, simply call in. That is 216-795-2307. And let our church secretary know that you need assistance in picking them up. And then you can simply mail them in. And that is uh, 1885 East 79th Street, Cleveland, Ohio, 44103. Yes, sir, we know our obligation to this church, and we know our obligation to God. God has been good to us. Amen. Let us be good back to him. Amen. So come on, let's give, because God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we want to get ready real quick for our Black History moment. Amen. Brother Maestro uh, Glenn Brackens is coming, and we ask that you give him our undivided attention for our Black History moment today. Let's give him a hand as he comes. This person I'm going to talk about today is not directly connected to Gethsemane, but he is connected to Gethsemane through the, the community. I'm going to tell you how. How many of you all go to work every day? How many of you all go ahead work one, once in a while time in your life? Okay. Okay, how many of you all have, most time you go to work, you work full time or part time, right? Yeah. Eight hours a week. It's your own or part time you work something out for me. It's the reason why you do that. And the why you do that is called is from a person who lived right here in our neighborhood. If you go back to 1845, John Patterson Green, which is the father of Labor Day, which lived right down here in this community, he's buried in Woodland. He wrote, he got tired of people employees, he was a black man, a black Republican. He got tired of people just working, working, working. It was no law saying how many hours we have to work. They just working, working. If you got hurt on the job, you just got hurt. So he wrote the bill to say, I think A, people should work so many hours a day. And he wrote the bill, that said, okay, we're going to work eight hours of the day. It started here in Ohio, then eventually he went to the, the federal government and he passed the bill. Also, that's why we celebrate Labor Day from a black man right here in that neighborhood, Senator John P. Green. Let's say it again, Senator John, John P. P. Green. And that is your black history moment for today. Amen.
Whatever you do, don't do it without me. This is our meditational song. Brother Jamal is going to help us. And I'll help us too. Come on.
with degrees and intellect. From 1990 to our current status, we are known as African Americans in America. What a journey we have had just to be respected as human beings. When we look at how we've been treated since we were brought here in chains and in boats, the black woman was the prize and the black man was the threat. Yeah. Yeah. Black man, even today, is still a threat in the world that works daily to decimate his demise. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, must I share with you, the man of whom we talk about, this black man, everything they did to decimate him and his existence, he's still standing. Yeah. They've tried every trick in the book, but can't knock the fact of this reality that the black man and woman are wonderfully and frequently made by God himself. Yeah. Can I share with you this morning? Sister Olivia Love, get back on me even right now in 2023 that we still have to have a conversation with our young brothers on what to do if the police pull them over. Church America has yet to deal with the systematic depersonalization of brown people all over this country. There is a plan, there is a plight, there is, in fact, information that comes directly from Washington, D.C. Yeah. on how to handle our young black men. Yeah. The proof is when black boys commit crimes we get branded with labels. They say that we are thugs. They say that we are animals. Yeah. And even say that we are terrorists. Come on. Come on. But what do you call a white man who goes into a church and guns down innocent parishioners? What do you call Timothy McVeigh? What do you call a sick white racist cop who pulls us over and shoots us because he feared for his life? What do you call slavery? What do you call Jim Crow? What do you call Bull Cattle? What do you call Ross Burnett? What do you call George Wallace, J. Edgar Hoover? What do you call what happened in Tulsa, Oklahoma in 1921? As black people were thriving with African American power and they were merging with the Native American as what we call Black Wall Street. Yeah. White mobs killed and bombed the Greenwood District yeah. and took the town back. What do you call George W. Bush? Hijacking the country in 9-11 only to go across the world to kill innocent and thousands of more in, a, in the name of a war and in the name of mass destruction only to come out and couldn't find a firecracker. What do you call the CIA and the FBI? What do you call the transatlantic slave trade? They are thugs, I say. They are the murderers. They are the criminals. And while we live in the greatest country throughout the world, it does not excuse what we as a people have gone through. Somebody ought to help me preach this. Asking us, ladies and gentlemen, to forget and move on is just like telling the Jews to forget about the horrors yeah. of the Holocaust. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. We are now, ladies and gentlemen, here in the streets of America, when they make a statement and they say stuff like, Black Lives Matter, which is really an argument of the past that if you have to say it and if you have to shout it, then it must not be true. Black life is looked at from the blurred perspective that has been taught from generation, generation. to generation. Yes, and some of the teaching has even rubbed off on us uh -huh. because nowadays we practice what they preach. Yeah. They preach against interracial marriages. They preach that we will never really come together in unity. And I stand today and shout with confidence and with pride that I'm black. And I am proud. 
And as the apple of my eye is not a white woman, but it is a paper bag, tan, mocha, chocolate, or high yellow, fine as wine, in the summertime, pleasantly plump, phenomenal black woman. Yeah. And I don't mind, ladies and gentlemen, saying, like my ancestors said, that if she can't use my comb, I ain't bringing her home. <laughs> Somebody don't help me to preach this. On, ladies and gentlemen, it's disturbing that every time we get a little money, we go across the line for yeah. a white woman. Yeah. Come on. Only to find ourselves destroyed yep. and confused and in the news as one who has been decimated again by the power of this world. All hope, ladies and gentlemen, Amen. would be lost without a word from the Lord. Yeah. That's why I'm here today to tell you about John chapter 11, which describes one of the most hopeless cases in the Bible. Yeah. Anyone looking in on the death of Lazarus would come to the, to the conclusion that he was dead yeah. mm. and that there was no hope for him at all. Yet, ladies and gentlemen, in the face of all hopelessness, Amen. Jesus demonstrates his power to step into any situation and transform it into a major blessing. Yeah. There ought to be somebody that's sitting here that's quiet this morning and haven't said amen. You ought to know this morning that Jesus has power to step into your situation and transform it into any situation. Yeah. Lazarus, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. was the brother of Mary and Martha. And Jesus would often stop there to house in Bethany. These individuals were declared as Jesus' best friend, if you can. But the text now says that there are some insurmountable problems. That's the first thing I'm gonna talk about, Brother Jeff. Insurmountable problems. Just like Nazareth experienced problems in those, in those same insurmountable problems are in the lives of African-American males in America. You look at the problem of disease. Mm -hmm. In the text, that word disease simply means weak right. or lacking strength. Yeah. You can't have joblessness, joblessness in the community and no hope in your home. And then we got failing jobs and failing schools and deteriorating relationships and families. And then you expect a black male not to see that there is no hope for him in society. Let me say to all of us in here, and all of our live stream that are on YouTube and our Facebook audience and have moved to this determination. Ladies and gentlemen, for us who have bought into the American dream and have moved out of the hood and gone to what white folks call how you living? Right. You can't make a difference when you don't make a deposit. Amen. Amen. Talk, Pastor. I'm preaching, but they won't say amen. Right. You can't make an impact when you don't have influence. Amen. All I'm trying to tell you is, I'm not saying that we should not have a better life to live. I'm not saying that we should not live well, drive well, or dress well, but I am saying that we need to become more active in changing where the Lord has delivered us from and don't forget where you came from because when you think you done made it the Lord has a way of humbling you and bringing you back down to reality we won't be able ladies and gentlemen to handle the storm if the Lord doesn't help us Lazarus ladies and gentlemen dealt with disease but he also dealt with some delays. Deacon Jenkins, Jesus heard from Mary and Martha that Lazarus was sick. Yeah. Jesus couldn't heal Lazarus where he was, but he could have healed Lazarus just by speaking the word. Yes. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, there ought to be somebody in this place today. Yes. You don't need Jesus to come visit you. All you need is a word. Yes from the Lord. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, can I tell you? Yeah. 
Jesus himself, the Christ, chose to take his time uh -huh. just to see would they trust him. Can I help you, ladies and gentlemen, that's in this place and been praying for a while for Jesus to show up in your situation? Yes. Can I share with you that Jesus sometimes chooses to take his time just to see if we're going to trust him in dark moments? Yeah. All right. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, we lean to our own decisions rather than seeking God yeah. first. Yeah. We decide to let our children make their own decisions about church and God and we wonder why they fail and everything that they attempt is because they have no divine intervention and no guidance in them to help lead them along life's journey. All right. They have no infinite wisdom directing them and we didn't have a choice when we were children no. to come to church because everything in the community was closed. Yeah. Me and Jeff just talked about it on yesterday. You didn't have a choice whether you were going to church or not. Ladies and gentlemen, you had to go to church. Yeah. In fact, if you didn't go to church, you couldn't do nothing else in the day. Somebody ought to help me preach that right there. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we went to church. We went to Sunday school. Yeah. We went to BTU. Yeah. And we turned out all right. We decided, ladies and gentlemen, as a people, that second thing is school, and first is a job. Yeah. This is a sad reality. This is uh, those numbers of which society gives us. 65% of black males have dropped out of schools uh -huh. and will not return. Watch this, ladies and gentlemen. They don't know how to read. Most of our young black brothers don't know how to read on an eighth or ninth grade level. Amen. And later they find out that they needed an education just to be a janitor at McDonald's. Amen. All because of a decision that came from us. We decided, I'm not going to spank him, but I'm going to give him time out. <laughs> I may understand the devil is alive. Yeah. My mama in, in, in the 70s and 80s, she took time out to hook my tail. Amen. There you go. Our children, ladies and gentlemen, because of the lack, don't respect authority. They don't respect their elders. They don't respect the church. They don't respect their parents. My mama told me back in the day, sister, I'm kicking your tail so the police don't have to. Right. Somebody ought to have me a priest. Can I share with you that's in this place? Yes, ma'am, and no, sir, can take you a long way in life. Yes. Brothers and sisters, here it is. When we look at this text, ladies and gentlemen, Lazarus dealt with disease. Yeah. He dealt with delays, but then he had to deal with an encounter called death. Yeah. Church, if we're going to argue truthfully, and we're going to argue logically, then the argument must hold up on both sides of the fence. All of the killing that is going on in our community, it ain't coming from white folks. Wish I had some help right here. All of the killing is not coming from white cops that's riding through the hood skating. Ladies and gentlemen, we're scared. Be out at the dark. Not because we're scared of white people. We're scared of Pookie and Ray Ray Pims. They got us scared to death. I wish I had some help in this house. Never thought that I would see in 2023, Brother Jeff, five commonly black cops jump on an innocent man of 140 pounds and beat the hell out of him until he's dead. And then try to cover it up come on, come on. by saying some weak excuse. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, come on. in this place today, come on. our young people that are in games, they are fighting for turf that they don't even own. Right. Amen. Come on, come on. Amen. So don't, don't come in my hood. Don't, come on, help me to preach this. Can I share with y'all 
it came up just a few years ago with, I can't call his name, but his name is number 45. All right, I'll say it, his name is Trump. Trump said it like this. Let us make America, come on, help me preach this, mama, pray again. Can I help you to tell you that, that what he was really saying is, we want our country back. They don't like this kind of preaching. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, but Mr. Trump, if you're listening to us this morning, if we really be honest, this land belongs to the Black Creek Indians. Yes. This land belongs to the Lakota, the Cherokee, the Sioux, the Navajo, the Comanche, and the Cachado Indians. Same way they pushed them out. They tried to annihilate and push the black male out of the way. Lazarus, yeah. brother, he dealt with disease, he dealt with delays, he dealt with death. It's not a mistake, ladies and gentlemen, and help me to listen to this. It is not a mistake that every street that is named Martin Luther King Boulevard across America yeah. is riddled and soaked with killing and crime. Yeah. All in the name of a man who stood for none lives. But that's why, ladies and gentlemen, I took the church outside last summer, even though some of us didn't agree with it. I took the church outside to simply tell our young brothers, pull your pants up. Cover your pants and drums. To tell our young women, put some clothes on and stop getting out the bed in your pajamas and going to the store with a nasty bottle on top of your head. I took the church outside to tell the world how to love themselves. Teach our young people how to love themselves and treat themselves with some dignity. Act like you got some sense. Act like somebody raised you. A lot of our cultural problems, Brother Brown, are self-inflicted. Yeah. Teach. Wish I had help in this house. Oh, come on and preach. Come on and preach. It ain't the white man no more. What's it's us. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Against come on. ourselves. Yeah. 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 The text, bro, shows us an insurmountable problem. Disease, delay, death. But it also shows us some doubt, Mother Brad. Many believers lose the battle right here in the arena of doubt. Yeah. Jesus purposely delays Deacon Johnson, his coming to make sure that Lazarus is actually dead. Yeah. When he shows up, Martha and Mary seems to be a little ticked off and they start fussing yeah. at Jesus. Yeah. Instead of praising his his presence. Here it is. If you had just been here, been here mm -hmm. my brother wouldn't be dead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not only, ladies and gentlemen, do I see an insurmountable problem, but secondly, I see an inconceivable promise. Jesus says, you're going to see your brother again. Listen to that Martha. I know I'm going to see him again. In the resurrection, in the last days. days. Yes, sir. This is going to bless y'all. Jesus tells this woman, Brother Jeff, watch this. It's going to help me. He said, You're looking at what you're looking for. He says, Watch this. He says, You're talking to what you're talking about. He says, You're speaking with what you're speaking of. You're standing by what you're standing on. I am the resurrection. Deliverance, ladies and gentlemen. It only comes when you recognize who the deliverer really is. Mark, maybe you listen to me. Deliverance comes when the deliverer is recognized. It ain't Tylenol, y'all. 
is Jesus. Say it, say it, say it. It, 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 ain't, it ain't that medicine called codeine and all that stuff that we take in for pain and aches. It's Jehovah. But it's Jehovah. Yeah. Right. Wish I had some help in there. Death disoriented these sisters. Yeah. Yes. Mary and Martha were so distraught that they couldn't recognize the deity that was on display. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Here it is. Jesus told them, do you believe in me? He told them, he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he. Yeah. He that lives and believes in me shall never die. Church, he says, Martha, do you really believe this? In essence, he was telling her, stand on the promises yeah. of Jesus, yeah. not on the promises of your problem. Church, I need to tell somebody in this place today that might be going through something. Yeah. You might be dealing with death. Yeah. You might be dealing with some doubt. You might be dealing with some kind of disease or what happened. But can I share with you, there are 365 promises in the Bible. So that simply means that God gives us a promise to stand on every day of the year. Somebody missed it. Let me push rewind and wake them up and push play again. There are 365 promises in the Bible, which means that you got a promise to stand on every day of the year. Tell somebody. Look at somebody. Wake them up. Walk them because they really do need to hear this. Tell somebody the promise is greater than your problem. Amen. Come on, tell them. Come on, tell them. Even if they ain't want to say amen, tell them the promise is bigger than your problem. Amen. Watch this, ladies and gentlemen. Can I tell you why the promise is greater than your problem? Because your problem or your promise, ladies and gentlemen, will lead to his power. Yeah. Wish I had help right there. Here's my last point. Here's my last point. I'm going to let y'all go and eat some chicken. Here we go. Here we go. Not only do I see an inconceivable promise, but I see an incredible power. Somebody shout power. Jesus went to Lazarus' grave, and the scripture says he was grieved and troubled. Grieved and troubled. When you look at the Greek perspective of this text, that word greed simply means to snort like a horse. Stop with the crap. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's how that's how greed Jesus was, but he was also troubled. Why did trouble Jesus? Jesus is troubled because of their lack of faith. Mm -hmm. Jesus is troubled because he has to wake Lazarus up. Out of a good sleep. Yeah. <laughs> good God of my priest pastor, I'm trying to. Here it is. Jesus says, roll the stone away. He says, Lazarus, come forth. This is gonna blow your mind, sis. Here it is, Sister White. He commands Lazarus to do something and obey something that he cannot hear. <laughs> come on, get Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. He says, Lazarus, come forth. He commands Lazarus to obey something that he cannot hear. Here it is, watch this. Lazarus is physically dead. Here it is. Until Jesus quickens him, he can't obey. But when the Lord speaks, somebody ought to know in this house that something got to happen. Yes. Is there anybody here that knows come on, come on. that what used to be dead when Jesus speaks yes. Yes. has to come alive? Yes. Oh, brothers and sisters, there used to be some dead people in this house. Yeah. Somebody still ain't calling. Yes. But the Lord said, come forth. Yeah. You got up from lying. You got up from sick living. You got up from stealing. You got up from drinking and drowning. You got up, ladies and gentlemen, from living a life of sin. All because Jesus said, come forth. I'm almost there, brother. I know I'm at my limit. 
Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. Jesus calls him, watch this, y'all, by his name. Can I help us, brothers and sisters, and tell us black women, stop calling your black man out of his name. Stop, stop calling our young men out of their name. I wish I had some now. Because eventually what we're teaching them is to answer what you're calling them. In essence, ladies and gentlemen, if you say they're no good and they end up no good just because of you speaking into existence. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. We are here today simply because Jesus said, yeah. come forth. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, said, he said, come forth. And all of the graves would have opened if he had not called him by his name. That means Lazarus not only would have got up, but Abraham would have got up. Yeah. Isaac would have got up. Jacob never yeah. would have got up. Come on. But he says, Lazarus, yeah. come forth. If he had not called out of my name, all the graves would have been empty. Here's the shout, Brother Jeff. I wasn't looking for a resurrection because it's not time for a resurrection, but it's time for a resuscitation. Here it is, y'all. So, so, ladies and gentlemen, he looks at Lazarus and looks at Mary and Martha and says, he's not dead, he's but he's sleeping. In essence, ladies and gentlemen, this is not a resurrection, but it's a resuscitation. And can I help us and tell us that's what our young brothers need on the streets of America? They don't need revitalization, they need resuscitation. When Dr. came out of the grave, Watch this, y'all. He was still bound to the grave. Yeah. Text says that he still had on grave clothes. His hands were bound. His feet were still bound, even though he was still alive. Can I share with us and tell us? That's the condition of our young brothers. Yeah. When they come out of jail, they're still, they still bound, yeah. even though they're still alive. Amen. Come on. Can I share with you? That it's been the promise and the procedures of this country to make sure that every black man gets a felony. Amen. Why? Because they want to keep you bound. Come on, help me to preach this if you can. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. When you're bound, you can't do nothing for him. You can't do nothing for him. If your feet are bound, you can't go running and telling what the world has, what the Lord has done for you. You can't give him praise if your hands are bound. Maybe that's what's wrong with church folk in this society that don't like to give God any praise. It's because they are bound. But I come to free you today and tell you this morning, them same hands that you won't use, God will make you use them to give him some praise. Wish I had some help in this house. The same thing that you want to use, God will make you use it to give him some praise. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. Black men are alive, but they are bound in some kind of way. They got dope charges. They got gun charges. They got, they're bound by women who are crazy as all get out. They're bound by a situation that they put themselves in. Black men in the country today, not all of us, but most of us are. Bound. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm getting there. Here's the shouting spot. When you look in the text, look at chapter 12 in this next chapter. Jesus is invited to dinner. And the Bible says Lazarus is not only dead, but he's alive and he's at the dinner table too. Y'all missed it. Let me back it up and give it to you. Jesus is invited to dinner in chapter number 12, and the Bible says that Lazarus is at the dinner table too. The scripture says, ladies and gentlemen, people came to see Jesus, but they also came to see Lazarus who was raised from the dead. Y'all yeah. missed this, so let me get ready to play my favorite song, Brother Glenn. Somebody is here today. You came not just to see Jesus, but you came to bear witness of some saints who used to be dead, but they're alive forevermore. I wish I had somebody. 
gift the Lord has been good to you. And he called you from darkness into the marvelous light. I just let somebody in to give him some praise. If the Lord has picked you up and turned you around and put your feet on a solid ground, you ought to give him some praise. I want to help somebody and tell you that you ought to look at your neighbor and say, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Is there somebody here who's been resuscitated? You used to be asleep, but now you're awake. You ought to testify this morning that nobody but Jesus, he did it for me. And if he did it for you, let me hear you say yes. Let me hear you say yes. If you're glad about it, come yes. If he opened doors, say yes. If he fed you, say yes. If he took care of you, say yes. If he gave you help and strength, say yes. He did it for you. But can I tell you what else he did for you? He died. But that's not how the story ends. He died. But says he got up with all power in the palm of his hand. That's why we're here today. It's because he got up and you're glad that Jesus did it for you. You're glad that you used to be dead but you got eternal life. Come on and give him praise. Shout Back at Calvary. And I'm glad about it. Black man in his house. It ought to be our responsibility to go and capture another brother. And to bring him where we are right now. Too many of us have a negative perspective. Sister Olivia, too many of us in this world today, if we make it, we shut the door instead of cracking the door. All right. Can I help you the same way that Jesus brought you in? It's your responsibility to bring somebody else. Cuff that young black man. Whether he listens or not, just plant the seed. As Paul said, some of us plant seeds. Some of us water the seed, but it is Jesus who gives the increase. And all I'm trying to tell you is, hope is not continuously lost because Jesus is still alive in the world today. And if he did it back then, he's still able to do it in there. There might be somebody in this house today who might want to come home there might be somebody today who wants to join, some man today who wants to join on men's day. That's a good day to give your life back to him. If you're here today, you ought to come. We open these doors to you. So God, this past week, uh, Mother Brown, Sister so Essie Brown, turned 91 this week. We want to wish her a happy birthday. And then two weeks ago, um, Sister Fitton turned 91. Amen. Well, bless her. Thank God for her. And then on uh, last week, he thought he got away from it, but uh, the, the fellow that's behind me in the green vest and just got off the mic, Brother Jabalgi, had another year journey. Amen. 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 We want to thank God for him. Amen. Father, is in your name. We thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for life. Thank you for living. Thank you for another day's journey. We're glad about it. Lord, we just ask that you would comfort us as we leave this place, but never from your presence. Continue to keep us. Continue to give us your wisdom, your knowledge, and your life.
light that we too can be a light in this dark world. In Jesus' name, we do pray that for your sake, we do say.